Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa, where transformation begins as we evoke, embrace, and evolve. Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays. This is Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? So, the mission for Heal Talk Tuesdays is to create uh, impact, serve, and help others grow with information, intention, and a damnation. Because Real Talk with Lisa brings uplifting and candid conversations, not only for you, for your health, wellness, and prosperity. So I am here present with you, and I thank you for being here. Thank you so much uh, for watching and being part of this community. If you haven't already done so, please be sure to share or subscribe, and we come to you every single week. Oh, so, how are you doing? How are you doing with being present no matter where you are? Today, I put a post on my story about rain. I was on the pathways walking in the rain, walking my dog, and it was just gushing down, and I was thinking, what if we can just pour kindness the way that rain is coming down? And then if you shift your mentality, your thinking, you realize that we welcome it. And I know so many are suffering and having a hard time with the rain, the sl- uh, sliding, um, the mountain tops coming down and having this waterfall. But at the end, we have to trust in the season welcome the season because at the scorching heat and the storms we realize it's so much like our emotions sometimes you get angry sometimes you are so hurtful and today i want to talk about exactly that about pain what pains us what exactly is pain there is emotional pain there's physical pain And someone said, Lisa, there is also a mental pain. Well, I believe it's not a mental pain, but mental anguish, not a pain. But your head can have a headache, some have vertigo, so it can pain, you can have a pain in there, uh, but we don't have mental pain, emotional pain, physical pain. So, I have been doing a lot of research as to what exactly is pain. And I work with my clients, clients who have a lot of pain, who come here emotional pain and also physical pain. And physical pain can be pain um, in their heart, uh, in their body, and also emotional pain is what they are feeling and so there let's talk about pain and we can have a conversation how you differentiate about pain what pains you um and how we communicate with using pain as some say it pains me to see someone hurt so how does it pain you what part of you hurts seeing someone else hurt. So realizing how much our words, the way we speak, the way we communicate has a direct effect on our mental aptitude and our soul of our body. You know why? Because your body responds to what you believe and what you say and what you feel. So it's this beautiful interactive thing and nowadays so many are finding that this ease also comes from this ease, ease in our mind, in our body, and what we feel. So the body responds to your mental anguish and your emotional pain. So there is an acute pain and there's chronic pain. Let's talk about pain. First of all, what is pain? Pain, I think is a way of our body communicating with us. If we're talking about a physical pain, that it just knocks on the door and says, 
pay attention to me. There's something off. There's something wrong in here. So we feel the pain. We don't think the pain. We feel the pain. And when we feel the pain, it's like, okay, what do I do about it? So there's two ways we can do something about it. You either do something about it, you tend to it, or you worry about it and you sit on it and you mull over it and you talk uh, negative about your body. There you go. That stupid pain is back. Damn it, this pain is here. And then just the words we use towards our body, guess what? What if your body was a seven-year-old child or even a five-year-old child? How would you speak to that child? That's exactly how I think of what pain is. It's like, pay attention to me. So let's separate it. Chronic pain uh, lasts longer than acute pain and is generally resistance to uh, medical treatment. So it's usually associated with a long-term illness and such as osteoarthritis because arthritis, it pains you when the weather is bad, when it's cold and your bones, it affects your muscles, it affects your bone and arthritis, it's a very slow moving, right? It's not a impactful injury. So if you fall and you break something or your tooth breaks or there is this immediate pain, that's different. So chronic pain is very subtle. Okay. So in some cases such as fibromyalgia, I remember when I used to do massages, I used to do fibromyalgia massages for my clients. And that is so subtle. It's like skin deep. And the way you touch, sometimes you can't even touch. It has to be very gentle. There's others that needed more of the pressure. Uh, working with cancer patients when I was doing uh, lymphatic massages. And, you know, that in itself was a different way of treating the body. So defining the characteristics of that chronic pain can be the result of a damaged tissue and or a nerve damage. So both acute and chronic pain um, have an effect on a state of mind. Okay, so what it does is we start thinking about it, you start worrying about it, and then you start the worry in itself creates another realm of mental anguish about your injury or the pain. Okay, so it's an ongoing case. Now, about 70%, it's been documented, 70% with chronic pain treated with pain medication. So what happens is when you put a medication, a medicine, you numb the pain. Okay, so many know about how to numb the pain and especially elderly because they don't know how, how to manage it, how to cope with it, how to do mindfulness or even the way I work with hypnosis, going into the subconscious mind and deep state of relaxation so we can bypass the pain the same way as when I do, uh, I've had seven uh, root canals with absolutely no anesthesia, no topical, none of that. Why? Because I can sit there and in just a few minutes go and do my own self-hypnosis to numb my gum and around the tooth that they are going to work on, where the endodontist is going to work on. So I become so clear, focused, and zoned in to that area. This part of my mouth is not numb. Only the part that they are going to do the root canal. And especially that one tooth, one area. So 
as I'm sitting there doing my self-hypnosis, one of the things is I bypass the pain factor. So what I feel is my physical body, what's happening, the drilling and everything, but the pain itself is not going to hurt me because pain is not there to hurt you even though it hurts. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. Pain is never there to hurt you in any way, physically, mentally, or emotionally. It's a signal of your body corresponding with you in order for you to tend to it in a manner that um, it's like quieting a child, that it's colicky or crying, we don't cry with them, we don't have tantrum with them, but we try and do our best to calm them down and relax them. I hope that becomes, okay, um, that's clear in how we do it. So how is it that hypnosis and pain, okay, let me go into the um, part that, the acute part. The acute part is, let's say, when the central pain syndrome that uh, the acute is where the injury happens and it is uh, immediate. It's very focused. It is very um, focused that you know where it happens. So an injury, you can have an acute pain. So what is it that we are talking about? What is it that I deal with? not the injury part of it, but the emotional connection to pain. So through hypnosis and hypnotherapy, we guide you, teach you how to manage your pain and the pain factor. So one of the ways you can do is just sit back, not only you close your eyes, deep breath, because breath in itself is very powerful. When you focus on your own breath, your focus becomes on that versus the pain factor. When you busy yourself with, that's why sometimes when you go to the doctor's office or dentist's office, they're playing music um, so that your mind, there is a part of your mind that gets focused on the music and sometimes you can even do this. You can put your ear pods on, listen to music while the surgery is happening or uh, any kind of a pain is happening. When you are happy um, and emotionally charged with joy, there is less pain factor because you cannot be happy and in pain at the same time, okay? So this part is like separating yourself just a tad from the pain factor. Most people numb their pain. I'm saying become one with it and then separate. That's exactly what I do. When I'm sitting there, I know what's going to happen and I have consciously and subconsciously through hypnosis, numbed my gum around the tooth, all the area, knowing that they're going to go in and take the nerve out. So I'm bypassing that by separating myself from the tooth. So whatever is happening to the tooth, it's happening to my body, not to me. It's a little bit difficult to express but once you start experiencing it, you will know. Hi, Sina John, how are you? Have you ever felt a pain so bad that you have screamed, oh my God, take this pain away. And then you fold, you're in pain, uh, you hit your finger to the door or something happens and you take it and you just hold it or you put it in your mouth and you go, hmm. Do you know what you're doing with that? Automatically, you are tending to your pain. 
you are kissing your finger, you are holding tight like a tourniquet and saying, I got you. That's exactly what we're doing. That's why when something like that happens and we are down on the floor and we go into field, fetal position, that's what we are doing. We are emotionally cocooning the body, hugging the body and safeguarding that moment. That's why we put a tourniquet to safeguard it and stop if it is a bleeding, if it is an injury at that very moment. So at that moment of flight and fight, what you do is you safeguard. Or you can say we put a pause on it so that we're not screaming or we're not passing out, but we are pausing. Now, why do I bring this up? Because so many of my clients who come to me not only for pain if it is the knee it's like what is it that you are not bending into life i had extreme injury on my elbow about three weeks ago and it was swollen during my move for my office but then sitting and all i had to do is talk to my elbow okay this is where it's a bend of a hand that it's supposed to handle because our body speaks to us so what is it that i am having a hard time handling what is it that it's a direction of handling things moving forward grabbing releasing what is it that I am having an issue? And just by doing that and speaking and doing my hypnosis with my elbow aspect, I bypass the pain factor. So the pain is gone. There is residual pain. Now, what do we do with the residual pain? Is it psychosomatic? Is the pain still acute in what spot? Or is the pain traveling? Because those who have psychosomatic pain that need attention, and sometimes they, instead of paying attention to themselves, some clients go from one doctor to another, from one to another, and believe it or not, it seems that it does not get resolved and the pain lingers that is exactly what i come in and i've helped over 90 percent of my clients bypass and overcome the pain how one you recognize the pain factor two you reconnect with your body and three you release you release what you're holding on to. Maybe it is a pain. Maybe something is paining you. But now you have incorporated it into your body and you're holding on to it. What if, and someone says, but nobody wants to be in pain. That's true. Nobody does. Not consciously. Some that hold on to a pain, not knowingly, is it's not that they are doing it on purpose, it's just unconsciously hold on to an emotional pain or a residual pain when knowing that after all the treatments, after surgery, after healing, that pain in that spot should not be there anymore because the injury has healed but then there is the residual pain and we're not saying it's all in your mind but it is a connection to the pain factor so as long as you're holding on to that pain and the pain is traveling i want you to become more aware and think to yourself what if this pain was no longer here 
On the scale of one to 10, how bad is my pain today? And start journaling and having a better connection to knowing how bad your pain is. Number two, if you start doing one thing that it's fun, one thing that brings you joy, if you watched a comedy movie or you did something that makes you laugh or you listen to music and you go into a different world or you do self-hypnosis and meditation and mindfulness, any of those, does that eliminate or reduce your pain factor? I guarantee you it will. So that in itself, science has proved that once you separate yourself from the pain factor, you will realize that you have control over it. And today's message is this, at, at any time, at any given time, Medication is fantastic. It is an, a, an immediate thing to bypass the pain factor. I can't even remember the last time I took medications. From headache, I sit and think to myself, what is it that my mind is so bundled and busy with? Or I have so much uh, on top of me sitting thinking that my mind is going in so many places that I have a headache. If I have a neck ache, <laughs> it's this computer. I'm sitting like this or our iPhones, right? So recognizing, unless it's an injury, what is the pain still in your body? And that's when we talk about the emotional pain. So that was all physical. Emotional pain is what hurts us. Relationships, breaking up, someone dissing you, um, cyber bullying, or even impersonal bullying, things that you believed to be true and you find out it is not, that pains you. And sometimes it can be worse than physical pain because that one you know how to take care of it. But a pain that it's in heart, someone said, how do you mend it? Does time heal it? Yes. And again, when we busy ourselves, when we release it, reconnect with ourselves, and we realize nothing from the outside can truly hurt you unless you accept it or do nothing about it. And then you resent yourself for not doing anything about it. And that emotional pain, which is self-inflicted, is worse than anything else. Because you start thinking, I'm not good enough. I don't deserve it. I can't do anything about it. I am out of control. It happened to me. And that in itself is what? Victimhood. What I did a post the other day uh, on LinkedIn, it says, stop victim uh, speaking and let's do leader talk. So the way a leader speaks is never, I am at fault. I didn't see it. It's like, this is the problem. Let's find a solution. Or let me sever my connections from what is paining me. Because bottom line, you have a choice. You do. You have a choice. Would you rather be in pain and hurt or move on and eventually heal and feel better? And it can be toxic relationships. 
And unfortunately, there are so many who stay in that kind of a relationship for residual benefits. And those residual benefits are the secondary pains that I can say I'm an expert in and I work with my clients. So through hypnosis and hypnotherapy, we bypass the critical analyzing, criticizing um, factor, the reasoning factor to bypass and tap into the subconscious mind where it has no judgment. Your subconscious mind never ever judges, analyzes, criticizes. It's just a blueprint. This is the fact. This is what happened. This is what you can do about it. Once you recognize it and reconnect with the issue, it doesn't matter what the issue is. It just is with no emotions. And that is when I say, I evoked it, I embrace it, now I can evolve. The same as recognize it, reconnect with it, and release it. So, I saw a beautiful quote, and I love quotes. If you know me, you also know that I am huge on making quotes and different quotes. So this is by Dr. Mark, Mark Hyman, Mark Hyman, uh, Mark Hyman. And he says, emotional health is not about eliminating all of your unpleasant feelings and living in a forced state of happiness all the time. It's about allowing the negative emotions to be present recognizing their source and knowing how to cope with them, period. That's exactly what we do. Once you recognize any factor, it can be mental anguish, emotional pain, physical pain. Once we have the root cause or just the cause, that's The secondary is easy. So hypnosis is one of the most powerful ways for you to tap into your subconscious mind. And as a practitioner of hypnosis and hypnotherapy for over 22 years, believe it or not, not only I can do this, but I can help you bypass your physical or your emotional pain. My name is Lisa Bumari. If this message was beneficial to you, if you have a pain in your body or you know of someone that has gone to many doctors and still has not been able to let go of the pain, by all means, give me a call. Subscribe, share, and I look forward to be of service to you. It is my honor to come to you every single week. My name is Lisa, and Heal Within is what I do. Until I see you next week, God bless you, and may the universal light surround you. See you next week.